Hello besties, it's primitive weapon season. I should be making deer hunting videos, but a hurricane came through, knocked out all the power, so I'm stuck here manning the generator. I couldn't even freeze a deer if I did shoot it. So I'm not doing any hunting right now. Uh, I got the black powder cartridge rifles put up. Because it's primitive weapon season, that means muzzle loaders. I borrowed this gun. I think it's super cool. I wanna show it off and I wanna have some fun with it uh, before I give it back. All right, so this is a Dixie Gunworks. 12 gauge muzzle loader. It's a 28 inch barrel and I put it on the fish scale earlier. This thing weighs seven and a half pounds. It's nothing. It's like a it's like a walking stick. So pretty cool. Uh, double rabbit ears, 1820s technology, percussion caps. This one has a really nice custom scabbard to ride with and on your horse. During the Civil War, these shotguns, they weren't widely issued, but soldiers did carry them. They imported a lot of them from Belgium and they're really popular with cavalry soldiers and soldiers that ran blockades and it, and it makes sense if you're gonna shoot on horseback, you're probably not gonna be very accurate. So a shotgun would come in very handy. I also heard that these load about 20 seconds faster than a percussion cap rifle. So like all double barrel shotguns, your front trigger is gonna operate the right hammer and your rear trigger is gonna operate the left hammer. This, this have a, has a modified choke and I believe that means there is no choke, it just is what it is. I don't see any obvious difference between the two barrels, but I'm gonna have some fun shooting it here in a little bit and I'm gonna see if there's a, there's a difference. This might be a, an eight or 10 pound trigger on this. So, yeah, let's get some, get some loads going here and I'll show y'all how I was taught to load this thing and I'll share with some stuff that I, that I looked up. So from when I was taught, our powder charge is going to be whatever this 45 110 shell holds and we're at, we'll actually get an accurate measurement on that here in a little bit. The powder charge is going to be followed by this cushion wad. I'm going to lube this thing up with some Murray's hair grease here. And for the buckshot, we're going to use nine pellets of, I believe this is number one buck in this little holder. There's nine. <laughs> All right. Let's get some powder in here. Uh, probably full enough. That's almost to the top. Now, let's see how much powder this actually is. It's more than 80 grains. Is it more than 90 grains? Okay. Is it 100 grains of powder? Is it 105 grains? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 105 grains of powder. That sounds like a little bit much. I, from what I was reading on the, on the internet that knows everything, um... We're talking, we're talking anywhere from 75 to 85 grains of powder. So I don't know. Let, let me do a little research and, and make a call here because that sounds like a, like a lot of powder in this shotgun. Because this is not my shotgun, I'm gonna tone this load down to 85 grains here. There we go. All right, let's load the, the right barrel. I hear it's important to keep up with what barrels you're loading. So. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this 85 grains that I measured out just a little bit earlier. All right, now we got a cushion wad. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little beeswax hair grease on this and kind of lube that barrel up. All right. I hear another good trick <laughs> with the ramrod is to hold it low. That way when this thing breaks, it doesn't stab through your hand real good. All right, nine pellets down the hole. All right, next we're gonna drop in the overcard. I don't know about those flimsy overcards. I feel like I need two in there. Next thing we do is put a cap on, but I gotta throw this thing in the truck and uh, find a spot to shoot. So I'm not gonna do that right now. And we'll repeat the process with the other barrel. Sorry about the generator noise. If you were in the path of this hurricane, Hurricane Helene, I hope you're safe and I hope your power comes back on. This is a cool little thing. It's a little bracelet uh, <laughs> that holds percussion caps. I hope these caps work. They're kind of old and corroded. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of, little bit of squeeze on these, kind of deform them a little bit so they hold tight on the nipple. That way when I shoot one barrel, it don't knock the cap off the other barrel. Oh, that's a trick. Anyway, there's the caps on the nipples. 
I'm about 20, 25 yards away from my target. I'm gonna shoot the right barrel first. All right, <laughs> let's see what happened. Ramrod kind of came out, just shook out when I shot that, that first barrel. So I gotta be careful with this thing. Make sure it stays in <laughs> if I'm gonna shoot multiple times. So I hit right where I was aiming. Yep, nine pellets and it's about a foot wide and I don't know, eight inches long. So yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so that was 85 grains with that right barrel. I consulted a black powder expert uh, on the phone just a little bit ago. He said, fill up the 45 110 shell and dump it down the barrel, all 105 grains. That's what I'm gonna shoot out of this left barrel. Uh, hopefully it don't break my collarbone or damage this shotgun, but we're gonna we're gonna find out right now. Woo. Yeah, that kicked pretty hard. <laughs> it uh hit right where I was aiming, all nine pellets, so yeah, I call that good. Alright, uh, certainly a lot of fun shooting this thing. It's not gonna be a lot of fun cleaning this thing, so I appreciate y'all watching. Hopefully I'll have some free time. Maybe the power will come back on one day and I can actually go deer hunting and, and make deer hunting videos. But in the meantime, that, uh, that big eight point's just gonna have to prance around free without me out there after it.